Hi, today I'm gonna teach you to do some pizzas on the Dan Cook Grill. And I just inserted my little pizza accessory here, pizza plate to make this very aggressive bottom heat that we really need to do a nice, crisp, thin Italian style pizza. And I placed the charcoal in a donut shape around here. Because if we only have the charcoal underneath the, the pizza insertion here, you're gonna have too much heat on the bottom, we're gonna burn the pizza. So we want this heat to go up along along the lid here to dump down again on top of the pizza so we get some preparation on top of the pizza but we still want a little bit of heat on the bottom here so it's kind of a donut shape and the pizza insertion in here and leave it for 20 minutes to really heat through with an open lid here so for doing a great pizza in my opinion i love the thin crisp ones so we're doing that kind of a roman style pizza the naples style pizza is a little bit more doughy it's not that it's, it's wrong, it's just another style, another tradition of pizza. But I like the thin crispy ones. And I always use the semolina durum flour to roll it out in. It crisps up the dough even more. And there's three basic principles of doing a good pizza, in my opinion. First of all, you need to do some proper bread, because that's the edible plate. You have to, you have to do some, some bread that really tastes nice with some sourdough, maybe, maybe get it to rest overnight in the fridge. Of course you can do faster recipes and it will still be a good pizza, but if we really are going for the tops, this is, uh, this is how it's, it takes time to develop the flavor in the dough or in the bread. Then you should do a tomato sauce that actually tastes like tomato. I think a lot of pizzerias are failing there actually. So, but you can see all my recipes on the site, so you'll get all the, my nice tips for doing great pizza. And the last thing of doing a great pizza is using fresh mozzarella, not that pre-cutted uh, dried mozzarella or what, what they call the cheese, but some fresh mozzarella. But you don't have to go and, and use the, the buffer mozzarella from Campania. I know from the area now it's Naples. That's crazy expensive. You can use a cheaper kind of mozzarella, but just make sure that there's this fresh, nice and creamy cheese here. So these three things, if you have these three things in order, you're gonna make great pizza. You can do anything on top of that actually. Well, this is nice and thin. And then the principle of doing a great pizza, of course, the Italian style of cooking is always less is more. So just try not to dump too many toppings and try not to do the amount of topping that big. Try to get it all beside itself and not on top of each other. So everything is cooked through and the flavors go together greatly and nicely. So first the tomato sauce, I'm going to do a little bit of mozzarella. For a, a normal size mozzarella is around 125 grams I think. And I'm using half a mozzarella for, for this pizza. And this is approximately 30 centimeters in di diameter. And look at this, it's already now, see this right and, white and red colors, it's just beautiful. I love doing this pizza. I'm going to do it with a little bit of spicy salami. This is Ventricina. It's from um, uh, the southern part of uh, Italy. But you can use uh, chorizo from Spain as well. It has kind of the same sausage. It's a chili paprika sausage. And let's do some creamy spinach as well. This is actually my favorite pizza when I have a hangover. It has everything. It has the chilies, it has the creamy spinach to get my system going again. And to really push it up there where we really got some huge flavor in it, I'm gonna do a little bit of garden solar. If you're not that much into like this moldy blue cheese, you can use some um, parmesan instead. Oh, we got a goose going on. <laughs> that's just a flyby. <laughs> no, you can use instead of the garden solar, you know that divides a little bit. Some love garden solar, I love it it's very much the umami, the big flavor of it. But a lot of people it's too strong. So you can use some parmesan instead, it will bring it bring the pizza nice. Anyway, so, and I just a drizzle, just a light drizzle of some nice olive oil, and we are ready to go in. Yes, and now I'm gonna, just gonna close the lid just a little bit, 
just let a little bit of air get in, but not too much because we still want to have the room temperature very high. If we can get it around 280 to 300 degrees, that's perfect. And you have to leave it there eight minutes and it should be cooked perfectly through. And let's check in eight minutes if we got that crispy moon surfaced baked uh, base of the pizza. So it should be done now. It's been around eight minutes. Just gonna check it. So I'm just gonna check without letting too much heat out that the bottom is cooked properly. Looks pretty good actually. Let's see. It looks really, really nice. Let's get it out here. Wow. And let's just do the the test for the crispy bottom. Don't do this at home. It's, this is chef fingers. They they don't feel any heat anymore. <laughs> I burned them so many times. But I think you can hear. This is a nice crispy, thin crusted pizza. Just how I like it. So, if you have a hangover, <laughs> or if you're just gonna do some great pizzas with your kids and your family, this is a very, very good product to do, like to, to really, to, to get these, this Italian vibe of it, without too much hassle, actually. Oh, just look at this, I can't wait. This is, how, this is how I like it. Spicy, creamy, and crispy. Cheers.